Well, that uh, that escalated quickly. Hello, everyone. Terrence here with Hollywood. I already did it. If you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you will be among the first to know. Uh, Jekyll Island is the name of this episode, episode seven of the of Fight Night, the Million Dollar Heist. It's a doozy. Some things happen too quick in this episode. Um, and then I'll get into it. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about what's happening here. So this episode begins where uh, JD and Chicken Man Gordon are following Mac Black and Baby Ray. Mac Black and Baby Ray are doing their across uh, uh, a trek across town with the goods to go see uh, Emerson at the Jekyll Island spot. But they're stopping at places. They're it's a road trip. They're eating. They're stopping to eat, stopping at a gas station to fill up with gas. One of their stops at the gas station, they end up at a gas station with a um, redneck uh, store owner. Store owner, for the most part, who's not in the wrong originally when Baby Ray is, just, is trying to steal, but then starts sort of mumbling and jumbling up his 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 racism with the fact that this kid was was stealing. Um, but he gets Baby Ray gets caught stealing. This uh, owner starts speaking off and yapping off to to Baby Ray. Talks about a gun that he has. And then Black is like, cool, what are you talking about? They turn the tables on him. Black puts a gun on him, and then he pulls out another gun and gives to Baby Ray so that Baby Ray can also have a gun pointed on this guy. So mind you, Max outside filling up the tank. He's not really seeing what's happening. When he does get wind of what's going on, he immediately goes in and like, tells Ray to like stand down. Stop. This isn't you. What are you doing? And JD and Gordon are far enough away where they can't quite see, but, but um, JD pulls off the binoculars and sees that there's a gun. Being pulled, and he's ready to go out to the ready. I'm like, hey, let me go. And Gordon's like, no, 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 we don't want to lose this. We don't want to lose this. Let's let this play out. Gordon's coming at it from a way of, my life's on the line. I don't want to lose any threads that's going to take us to the final boss, quote unquote, if you will, that will get my name freed. Let this play out. I don't. If somebody die, if the white white cracker <laughs> store owner dies, I don't give a damn. Let's just follow them. Mac does eventually get. Ray to put the gun down, stop, and then they they take off. They put a clothesline on the door and uh, head off. JD unfortunately can't see because of the clothesline and where the um, store owner is. Can't see if the store owner is in a good way. If he gets shot, if he die, what happens? So he, as his officer, even though he doesn't have a badge, he feels it's his duty to go check on him. Gordon is like, why are we caring about this this white dude? So he goes in to uh, check on the guy. The guy's fine. He got smashed upside the head, but he, he's still alive. Still being racist, though. Um, <laughs> um, JD comes, identifies himself as a cop. He originally starts saying, oh, no, they're back. They're coming with you. Um, but then Gordon comes in. He's like, oh, that's the one that robbed me because the fro. He's basically saying that Mac and even though the height, completely different people. But for him, in his world, all black people look alike. And so he spits that off to Gordon. Gordon sort of has a field day with that and say, oh, you're going to come save this cracker. You're being a white man savior to doing all of this stuff. It's at that point that JD and them are trying to figure out where the boys are headed because now they've lost them. Like they didn't, because they didn't follow him because he, JD felt so inclined to come save the store owner. Um, they no longer have a read on where the boys went. And so he's asking, like, do you have any idea where they were going? And he's like, nah, he's basically being and saying, no, I'm not giving you anything, blah, 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 blah. To that point that Gordon goes into his mode of saying, I smell apples. It smells like you might be doing some illegal moonshine up in here. And JD kind of lets him go off on it a little bit, realizing that, crap, I needed, again, I needed him to sort of go off the reservation a little bit um, to figure out how we can get some information. Eventually, because he doesn't want to get jammed up about the moonshine, the store owner gives him I heard that they, they, they'll be heading to Jekyll Island. And he's like, all right, cool. So the two of them head toward Jekyll Island. They don't have the place or location of their meeting in Jekyll Island, but at least they know that they're heading there. One of the only scenes that happens outside of the JD Gordon slash Black and them storyline is Vivian goes to, uh, needs to go dispose of the bodies. 
So she goes to Ulysses' funeral home, an old friend, to get rid of them. While at the funeral home, it clicks for her a light bulb to come up with a new sort of business plan that she wants to go and deliver to Frank. I'm going to continue the Vivian piece, even though it doesn't happen directly after, but because they're connected and nothing else really connects the rest of the story with them. But Vivian goes to go see Frank. She goes to a dinner that he's at um, and just wants to discuss some business opportunities. She thanks him for getting him out, getting her out of the jam that she was in. Um, and uh, she apologizes again for being involved or being a, a person who ran the party that he got robbed at. She then goes on to tell him about funeral homes and how the funeral homes can be used to move things that you don't want be to be detected by the naked eye. She also says that the owner, owner of this funeral home is a community like, like he's been there for a while. So he's grandfathered into old zoning laws, which means that he doesn't have to report anything that he buys to the state, which sort of sets off a light bulb for Frank. He said, okay, all right, you really are. And that person who sort of got your hand in everything. She's like, yeah, I really do have my hand in everything. And Frank's like, well, I've heard that saying before, but no. And he's like, nah, I got the recipe. Like, I'm really about that life. So it's clear, it's clear that Vivian is at a point where she is trying to build up her empire and try to do it without the men in her life. She's been used by as a former dancer, as a person who was sort of the side piece to Gordon. She's already been the, the afterthought or person or hanger on her for these plans. Now she's doing it her own and um, her own way, which I think what's going to end up happening, the way this feels is that Gordon's going to be fine. And Vivian's going to create this business model, create this great thing, and Gordon's going to kind of have the choice to whether or not to follow behind Vivian and do that or actually try and go repair and fix his actual life. That's just how this reads and how it feels like it's going. But before we get to any of that, continuing on, the boys follow um, Black, Mac, and Ray. Who make it to their meeting spot? They make it to their meeting spot. It's an old abandoned theater, um, and they're waiting. They're just waiting for Emerson. They get a call from Emerson, and Emerson and Mac have a little back and forth. Um, he asks Mac to get Black on the phone. He tells Black, "Hey, Black, here's what I need you to do. I need you to get rid of any loose ends. I need you to go ahead and kill Ray." For a brief moment, Black's like, "Well, wait, why?" Like. Because he's starting to have an affinity for Ray. Like, he's starting to like that kid. So he doesn't really want to do any harm to him. He has, like, is that truly necessary? Emerson's like, that's, we got to remove all loose ends. You take care of Ray, and I'll take care of, of Mac. Those are the orders. So Black uh, uses the guys that he was, he's basically planning to get strippers over anyway. He uses that guys as the reason to sort of let down everybody's guard and use that as a cover to sort of do what it is that he has to do. At a bar, Emerson is drinking his sorrows. Like he knows what he has to do. He knows he basically has to go kill the person that saved his life. So he's reminiscing about war stories that he had when Mac actually saved him. Um, but he's doing it at a bar that probably shouldn't have any black people in it. Uh, he's a bit out of place. And one of the people there tells him as much. And uh, Emerson gets a drop on him, puts a gun to him. And then the, the bartender pulls a shotgun out on Emerson. But he at least gives him the, the decency to leave the bar, um, which is not here, because I, I, I feel like it's because of his military service. He's like, hey, look, soldier. He keeps calls him the soldier. He's like, not here. Um, and so while he respects him, this I'm not letting this go down in my bar, but I'm going to let you leave. Like, I'm not going to think anything less of you or shoot you like an animal like most people would. Just get up. Get out of here. As they're driving, JD and Chicken keep bickering back and forth. Chicken keeps letting them in. Like, oh, you're going to go ahead and save? You're going to tap dance and go save the white man? But like, my life is on the line. My whole family, everything that I have is on the line. And you just let that walk out the door because you, you want to play Captain save a hole to a white dude. In that back and forth, JD goes below the belt and mentions um, why you, you, you don't even have a family or a wife anymore. And he immediately regrets it. He immediately knows, like, crap, I, that's, I didn't mean that. My bad, Chicken. I was just upset. Gordon's like, pull over. Pull over now. So the, he finally does pull over, and then they just start scrapping in the middle in the middle of the street. I mean, in the middle of the side of the street, they just beating each other, nut punches, kidney punches. They they just getting it in. It's a frustration that the two of them had to have probably gotten out just long term. Not even just about this case, but about whatever happened to the two of them in the past. They both needed to sort of punch each other out. Um, and like with any guys um, 
who are actually who friendly or friendship or there's some type of kinship between the two of them, you can punch somebody in the face and they'd be perfectly fine with them the next moment. And that's sort of what occurs here. Um, they just need to get that out of the system. Um, after a few blows, and once they sort of calm down, Chicken Man sort of goes in and it's about his first date with Faye. He's like, my first date with Faye was us walking in the park. And she thought that was super romantic, but the truth was I was just broke as hell. Like I ain't had no damn money. That prompts JD to say, I apologize for the Faye comment. Like I, I didn't mean that. And Gordon's like, no, nah, no, nah, you meant it. You meant it. Um, but it's not like I didn't deserve it. Like I, I put myself in the situation. Like I always say that I am doing this, these running numbers. I'm doing all these things on the side for my family. But the truth is I'm not, I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this because I have something that I feel I need, I need to prove. JD says that after seeing who you were and seeing your family and whatnot, he was having some second thoughts and sadness about the way that he wound up putting you behind bars. Like if I had to do it over again, I would not do it the same way. Um, as they are sort of having their kumbaya moment, a car pulls up with three women in it. Three women who are beautiful, gorgeous black women. And they're asking where, um, the Dolphin Club is. They're actually asking the shark thing. They got the words mixed up a little bit, but they're saying we're the Dolphin Club. Because that's where they're heading. They're, these are the three girls that have been called by Black to go entertain those boys. Um, JD gives them the directions and then thinks about it for a moment. Like, Wait a minute, the Dolphin Club's been closed for a minute. And there are three of them, each one for each. Let's go. There's one for each bank robber. Or there's one for each robber. Let's get in the car and go. So they realize that that's where those girls are heading. So they follow them. And uh, we then pick up with the girls at the, at the scene, at the party. No sign of JD and Chicken. They're just kind of tasting the joint, making sure that this is where we're supposed to be. But the girls are having a good time. They're partying, doing some coke. Uh, Black is doing coke. Mac is not. Ray sort of gets some coke near his nose. Um, it's at this point that Ray has a moment where he talks to Black bit and it's like i'm just, before we do anything else with these girls i just want to let you know that i'm super excited about like continuing our business together like he told him that he was going to take him up north and they're going to work together and do business and ray is super excited about all that and just gives black a little bit more cause pause and having to eliminate this kid it's at that point that black asks him like willie's like which one of these girls do you like and ray's like i like honey so willie goes over to honey whispers in her ear she takes ray up to a room and uh you know, gives him gives him the best night of his life. <laughs> you know? um, Black then grabs his bag because Ray didn't go up with his his bag of money. Grabs his bag, grabs his own bag that he's he's getting, and starts setting him up. Max, like, what are you doing? He's like, look, the kid left his bag down here. I'll remind him that he should always have this with him. But I'm going to take this up. So then Max left with one of the girls. Ray has honey up there, and uh, Willie is taking one up. The dancer that's with Mac asks, has he ever saved a life? Which is very different than I think most people ask a uh, military person. They usually ask, have you taken a life? She asks, has you saved a life? Um, and that's when Mac remembers the Emerson thing. And uh, a, a really small moment, but something that's kind of pointing to this. She asks if a medal was given, and he's like, look, babe, like, let's be honest. They're not going to save. They're not going to give up medals for saving the N-word. Like, that ain't. That ain't going, that's not how it goes. The world ain't, that ain't like that. It's at that point that she takes charge of the situation and starts looking out for Max. She, she becomes the, the aggressor of the two and, and, and gives him a good time. We then see Honey and Ray finish up. Uh, he's got this sheepish grin on his face. And you can tell that Honey, it wasn't what. We see a scene of Willie and his girl just banging each other's wall. You can hear it down the hallway. They, like, they're just getting it in. And he's like, no, you were sweet. Because Ray's like, well, am I not doing it correctly? And she's like, no, you were sweet. And it's it's clear that Ray, either if it's not his first time, it's definitely his second time. He has not had much experience in this. He immediately starts like trying to get Honey's number and be like, hey, we're going to be heading up north. If you're ever up there, you can give me a number, all this sweet stuff. He is head over heels now uh, for this girl. Uh, the girls pack up. They're all done for the day. They're about to head out and leave. Um, Max sees them out. As Max sees them out, JD pulls a gun and gets a drop on him um, while he's getting the smoke. And JD then explains to him, like, look, I've, I've talked to your family. So you're the one who jammed up my, my wife and my daughter. Like, look, I'm not trying to jam them up at all. We're trying to get your daughter and your wife out of this mess. Um, and while that's happening, Black connects with Ray, 
see how the night went. Just like, hey, how did it all go? He's like, yeah, it was great. And then he asked where Mac is. So this is the moment where he realized that Mac is not around to sort of be the, the guard or protector of Ray. So this might be the moment where he can actually get the drop on him. Mac is still outside trying to do everything he can to look, look, take, I don't care what you do with Black, Willie, whatever. Put me away, fine. But can we go easy on Ray? Like, he's a kid. And JD's like, he's a kid who still did this robbery. Like, but I'll tell you what, he's a minor. He's 16. We'll have him tried as a juvenile. That way, when he's 18, he can get out and probably try to live some form of normal life. And Max, like, all right, cool. I think that I can agree with. Let's go ahead and do that. So at that point, Max says, what does he need me to do? He's like, I need the person, whoever you connected with today. Matt gives up Emerson's name. And then that's when it clicks with uh, Gordon that Emerson is the name of the person who he stole the party with. And that's also who was in that photo that they saw in the hotel that Mac was standing in. Mac then lets him know that he's just the middleman. There's somebody over him that I don't know who it is, but he is being played like a fiddle as well. Um, but he'll be here in just a moment. So you can ask him who, what, who or what that is. So he sets them up inside the van. And then we see the lights pull up of Emerson. When Emerson pulls up, Black pulls a gun on Ray, who's staring at a fire. Like he's basically almost like an old um, crap. I'm thinking about the, the old movie. It's not old Yeller, but it's intentionally like taking him in the back and, and killing him. Um, of Mice and Men. Yes, there's a moment where the thought is like to take, shoot him in the back so that he doesn't see it. That's what he's essentially trying to do to the kid. So that and so that he doesn't have to look him in the face to see what he's actually doing. Um, but he can't do it. Matt Willie cannot pull the trigger on Ray. He, he does, he balks, he misses his opportunity, and Ray ends up going back upstairs because he forgot the money that he left up there. Emerson and Mac are outside, right outside the van. So it's an earshot of JD and Gordon. And they're going back and forth. It's at that point that Emerson's saying, like, you keep telling Black everything, but you're leaving me in the dark about what the hell is going on. Like I I thought you and I were the close ones, but you're, you're giving him all the information. Why, why am I just being left out here on the own? Um, it's at that point that Emerson, probably because he's a little drunk and not quite realizing what he's doing, but he tells uh, Mac that it's Cadillac. Terrence Howard um, is the person who has set all of this into motion. He, well, he's trying to make a move on Frank, and this is what this is it's all about. So they, they all go inside, uh, Emerson and, uh, and Mac, and they meet Black. And they all go inside to start counting money. At this point, things just start, becomes like a Quentin Tarantino movie because things just start happening rapid fire as far as who gets to drop on whom and who gets shot. While in this, Emerson is asking Willie, like, hey, did you handle that loose end? And Willie's like, not yet. Uh, Mac hears that. It's like, well, what are you talking about? What's the loose ends? And he's like, is Ray a loose end? Am I a loose end? Um, he then grabs a the gun. It becomes sort of a Mexican standoff. Uh, Mac is holding a gun towards Emerson and Willie is holding a gun towards Mac. And so it's like the three of them sort of going round and round, um, trying to figure out who's going to get the drop and who's going to get the, the, the lead up. Now, mind you, JD and Gordon are still outside. We then see Ray come back up and he shot, he fires off a shot. Um, unfortunately, he hits Mac. Uh, and it's, it's a really telling moment. He hits Mac, but he has a moment, Ray has a moment where he looks at Willie and he, he mouths, sort of whispers the term, I thought I was shooting you. Um, which no, lets Willie know that even if, if the kid was a good shot, he would be dead, but he still doesn't want to kill that kid because he understands why he was trying to kill Mac. Emerson is at the, the, the foot of, 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 of Mac. He's trying to check on him, make sure he's good. He's holding him in his arms, right? Mac dies. The second Mac dies, Emerson takes a gun and shoots Ray in the head. Here's the thing. His pain point in all of this was killing Mac. Once Mac is dead, he can easily kill Ray. Like he has no affinity or no connection to him whatsoever. So kill that dick, kill that kid. Willie then comes to a point and is kind of like, well, hold on. Like what's that thing they say? Uh, there's no honor amongst thieves. And then he shoots Emerson in the head. Part of this, I think, is because he just killed Ray, but also I think a little bit is a Willie's kind of like, well, hold on. Now, if these two are loose ends, I'm also going to be a loose end. And so I would be the next person that he's going to kill. I'm just going to go kill this dude now, get the drop on him, and get all his money. So 
He takes that, and then JD comes in, and a shootout starts between the two of them. And he gets a pretty good shot of him in the arm, and the chase ensues down um, through this theater. Eventually, he ends up back outside where Gordon tackles him, and they get the drop on him. And so the Quentin Tarantino-esque of this of the, sh- the episode has basically wiped out all the people who were a uh, criminal who were for that heist. Except for Willie, he's the one that gets to live, but he's going to spend his time behind bars. The coda of this episode, um, another legend comes out of out of the shadows. Miss Miss Debbie Allen, um, who is Cadillac's mother, um, who has been involved with Frank for some time when her husband used to be under an underling of Frank. Um, but at one point in time, her husband was a king who sort of was crushed under the thumb of Frank. So we get back to Jersey and we see Cadillac's mama. Um, and she says that the humiliation that you're trying to give to Frank is not enough for Frank. After all that she's done to put you and your father through. Um, she's like, I had to sit back idly and stand back and be quiet when this stuff was happening back in the day. Um, when she stripped your dad from being a king of his, his town to being like a middleman under him. And, uh, I need you now to stand up to Frank. Like you're doing it. This is your time. This is your time and go out, take it and go out and do it. There's a piece of this. I like seeing Debbie Allen, but I feel like this might be that coda might be the most soap opera piece of this show that I have seen in the entire season. It feels a lot like a Dallas or a Nashville or any of those type of shows was like, ha, or even to a lesser extent, um, uh, the show that Terrence Howard and I'm blanking out with Cookie and all of them, Empire. Feels like that. Like it feels very like, ha ha, here's what's going to happen next. And unlike a lot of the black exploitation stuff that has sort of occurred before this feels more just the sort of the way that it's shot and the way that it comes off the way that it's acted it, it just doesn't feel in line with everything else um but i'm sure it'll be fine it'll kind of recorrect recorrect itself uh on the final episode but that's that's the, that's this episode when we got one more left the heist piece of it has sort of been solved there still does that hanging carrot of frank needs to get knowledge that it's Cadillac so he can take Gordon out of the, out of his sights. Um, and I think whatever Vivian has going with Frank is probably going to be what gets Frank saved in this, or maybe even Vivian and Frank set their business up. Cadillac moves in, takes Frank off the board. And then Vivian is sort of the empire leaders of it all by herself, which would be pretty cool. But I still think that moment where Gordon is going to kind of reach out and be like, do you want to come join me with this or do you want to go fix your family? And I hope with all things that have happened, how he sort of gotten smacked in the face with being on the wrong side of the law just because he kept going up for rungs that he was not prepared for. I hope that he chooses the right thing and goes for his family. What did you guys think about this episode? Uh, episode seven of Fight Night, the million dollar high school. Here's your thoughts and comments in the comments below. If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI. You can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDigit at gmail.com. We also have a podcast with the same name. That's from Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any other place podcasts. We're there. And like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.